Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Remember, I'm here to help you pass your PEP exam. Due to the impact of COVID-19, there were some changes made to the National Standards Curriculum. My mission is to ensure that I go through all these objectives that you should cover to sit your exam. I will look at objectives from the four core subject areas, mathematics, language arts, science, and social studies. Today's lesson, I will look at sets, sets in mathematics. I will look at all the objectives that you should cover to sit your exams. Stay tuned to the video. At the end of this lesson, students should be able to identify members of a finite and infinite set. Students should be able to name and list members in the intersection and union of two sets. Students should be also able to draw Venn diagrams to represent or show the intersection of two sets. Now, let us look at a set. What is a set? A set is a collection of distinct objects. For example, the set of animals at the zoo. Now, this could vary. There can be a zoo with animals such as a giraffe, a zebra, and an elephant. So that set could have three elements. Now, we use braces to list the elements of a set. A set that contains no elements is called an empty set and is noted just like what you are seeing here. Let us look at identifying members of a finite set. A finite set is one in which all the elements can be listed and counted. For example, the set of the first five prime numbers. That set is listed as 2, 3, 5, 7 and 11. The elements are definite, meaning you know of all the elements that is in the set. Example 2. The set of vowels, which is listed as A, E, I, O, U. Another th set that can be counted and you know of all the elements in that set. Now, if for a finite set you think you can count all the elements or you can count all the elements and you know of all the members, what do you think is an infinite set? An infinite set is one in which it is not possible to list or count all the elements. So, for the finite set which we are able to count the elements, and for the infinite set we are not able to count or list all the elements. An example of an infinite set would be the set of all numbers. Now, the first all number is 0, then you have 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, and you continue forever and ever, and you will never reach the last whole numbers. So when we speak of finite, infinite sets, we are speaking of those sets that it is, is impossible to count all the elements. Another example of that would be the set of sand on the beach. Do you think it could count all those sand grains on the beach? No. So that would be an example of a infinite set. Now, some more examples could be the set of stars in the sky. We are not able to count all the stars in the sky, so that would also be an example of an infinite set. So, please remember, a finite set, you can count all the elements, or you can list the members, but for an infinite set, you can't list all the members. That is all there is to infinite and finite sets. Okay, so we move to the intersection of two sets. Intersection. Now, intersect. When something intersect, it means they join. So the intersection of two sets contains only the elements that are in both sets. The intersection is noted, just that symbol in red, similar looking to an N. Alright, so we have two sets, A and B. That is a symbol that used to represent intersection. Now, an example of this, of two sets, the intersection of them, set A and B, the elements are listed there. Set A, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Set B of elements 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and 15. Now, which elements are common to both the sets? Alright, we're seeing the number 3 in set A, and we're also seeing the number 3 in set B. We are also seeing the number 5 in set A, and we are also seeing the number 5 in set B. There is also 7 in set A, and there is a 7 in set B. So all those elements, 3, 5, and 7, are common to both set A and set B. So A intersect B would be 3, 5, and 7. That's how we get the intersection of two sets. Look at the elements common to both and we list them. Now, on the other hand, the union of two sets contains all the elements contained in either set or both sets. The union is noted, that symbol looking like a U, and an example of this, set A, has elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Set B has elements 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and 15. Those are odd numbers. The first set, set A, is a set of counting numbers from 1 to 8. Now, the union of these two sets, union, union comes from the word unite. So, the union of set A and set B would be to combine and put all the elements together. Now, when you're writing or listing the union of two sets, you don't repeat any element. So you are going to list all the elements, but do not repeat any element. And that's it for the union of two sets. The third objective states that you should be able to represent the intersection of two sets on a Venn diagram. If there is no intersection between the two sets, then you will have a disjoint Venn diagram. Now, looking at set A and set B, do you think there are any common elements? We looked at these two sets earlier and we identified that num the number 3 is in set A and it's also in set B. The number 5 is in set A and it's also in set B. The number 7 is in set A and it's also in set B. So we can basically state that a intersect B is equal to 3, 5, and 7. The first thing that you should do is to list the common elements of the two sets. So I have listed the elements of the two sets, the common elements, 3, 5, and 7. Now, since we have a common elements, we are going to draw, go ahead and draw our circles for the Venn diagram. Alright, so that's one, and that one represents set A, and let us join it with another one. Alright, and this one will represent set B. Let me just label these two sets. Set A there, and set B. Now, this is basically joining two sets to represent the intersection of two sets. Joining two circles to represent the intersection of two sets. Now, what we need to do is to list first the common elements of set A intersect B in the intersection. So where the circles overlap, in this area where the circles overlap, that is where we write the elements for the intersection. So the first one is 3. Next one is 5. And we can put 7 in the middle there. All 
All right, so three, five, and seven is in the intersection. All right, what we need to now do now is to list the other elements that are listed in the set in the, in the other side of the circle. So let us look at the other elements for set A that we didn't list. The first one is one. The next one is two. And we can put them anywhere in the Venn diagram. Three is an intersection, so we don't need to list it again. We have four. We have six. And we have eight. Now, if you realize, all the elements of set A are still in the circle of A. But because the elements are a part of set B as well, they are in the intersection. That's 3, 5, and 7 that we have in the middle right here. So these are the other elements that make up set A. Those elements are now in A only. They are in only in A. Let us now go ahead and list the other elements of set B for set B. So we already have 3, 5, and 7 in our intersection. So we have the remainder 9. We have 11. We have 13 and we have 15. So now we have listed all the elements of both A and B and we have listed the intersection. Please note that the intersection of any two sets are the elements common to both sets. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.